anybody that you know is a, a veteran, thank them for sure. And uh, just keep in mind that uh, this is a day of remembrance. And I'm not saying don't enjoy your weekend, your holiday. Please do. Please enjoy it because uh, there was a big price paid and you should enjoy it.
little terse, but it is good to see you back up here, Marvin. Mm-hmm. And then I call Eddie Grun another foot. <laughs> uh, to see Doug back and doing better and, and see all your wives, you know, that, that just means so much. To have good leadership. A lot of churches don't have that, and we're very blessed, and we don't need to take it for granted. And I'm telling you, congregation, be thankful for these men. They have they have been such wonderful consults to me and helped me. And by virtue of that, I'm going to bring up something early on this morning before we get into the message because this is the essence of what Christianity is about and what we should be doing. And that's lifting each other up. And uh, last week was a special milestone for Brother Daniel. He came with us. He can share with us if he wants, whatever he wants. But, you know, he has been two years coming out of a rough place. We all say we've been in rough patches in our life, so nobody here is, you know, we're just rejoicing with you, brother. We are so excited for you, and we're here with you in this battle. And that goes for anyone. No matter what your battle is, no matter what your struggle is, you don't have to walk it alone. You have got brothers and sisters in Christ that will hold you up in prayer, grab you by the hand and say, let's go. You can do it. But this morning, Lisa is going to present to him. I'm not familiar with what it is, but she called it a shadow box. <laughs> but it's a commemoration of the two years. And if the Lord delays his return, then I can't wait to see his five years. His <laughs> ten years. Man, that's a testimony. Amen. That's what we're here about. So if y'all don't mind coming up and go ahead and present this. And if you want to say a word or two. This is, this is his shadow box, oh, yeah. and on the inside it has encouraging scriptures for him so that he knows that he is chosen yes. and worthy. Yes. He's strong. So I give this to him. This morning is really going to be 
pretty simple. And if you want to open your Bible, it's going to be one verse. You can just write a verse that you want because you probably know it by heart. Um, it's going to be Exodus 20, verse 3. Today we remember those who gave, as Marvin said, all. And I want you to think about it. When we talk about they gave all, not only did they give their lives, but think about the families. Each year, as there was an empty place in the same, sometimes, especially during World War II in Vietnam, there will be men out of one family that might be there one year and not there the next. <laughs> have we been a perfect nation? No, but they formed a more perfect union. We have spent the last 250 some odd years trying to be a more perfect union. And it's still a noble and worthy calling. But I found something really interesting, a very interesting parallel. And we're going to be a, doing something here in a minute that I think is vitally important. But the Constitution is really what America is about. It's not a landmass. It's not our military. It's not our Congress, our Senate, our President. It is a parchment, a constitution that enshrines every person's rights. Everyone that has died for this country, and by the way, we always think of military servicemen, but there have been many law officers that have given their lives to protect us here from domestic Amen. terrorists. Amen. They too have families that are grieving even this very day for the losses. So this is a very sobering time, but it's also a time to be thankful. A time to remember those people in our hearts and in our prayers. We might never meet them personally. But we're living the blessings of what they sacrificed every single day. When I was growing up, I don't know what's talking about school anymore, and I'm almost scared to ask. Uh, but I, for those that are in my age group, uh, we remember, we had memorized the preamble to the Constitution. And we had to memorize parts of the Constitution, and we had to write, write essays, and, and we had to go through the Bill of Rights. You were taught these things, how important they were. And I want you to know something. The Constitution is America's Declaration of Independence. And I want you to think about today, the Bible is the Christian's Declaration of Independence. Both documents are soaked in blood. One, our Declaration of Independence is soaked in the blood of patriots who loved freedom so much they were willing to give their own life so that others could enjoy it. Christ loved the world so much that he gave his life so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. This is a day of remembrance. Something that we don't see or even do it much anymore, but I think we're going to change that a little bit. I want us first this morning. Where's all? Back here. Come on up here, girl. She's going to help me out, because they do this at her school. Man, uh, living split. <laughs> I was young once too. <laughs> but we used to say the pledge to the Bible. And you know what? This should precede all things. So would you lead us in that, please, darling? Thank you. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a matter to my feet.
I pledge allegiance to the
And they have this thing called the fog of war where nobody's quite sure what's happening. But it just goes to show how quick even the churches were willing to give it up. And then those that deign to stay open during that time at the pastor, heaven forbid, and I've heard of a few that call COVID and passed. But he got what he deserved. How callous. How callous. All I can say is, Jesus said, whosoever loves his life shall lose it. And whosoever loses his life for my name sake shall gain it. So to every one of them pastors who died during the fire of war and COVID because you stood strong, I commend you and I pray the blessings of heaven have came your way. It is so amazing to me that Jesus died for all. You know, this was a war of all the ages. He didn't have anyone to help him yet. Now, he could have called down 10,000 angels and says from heaven. But he willingly gave his life. As the scripture up here earlier from John said, no man, no greater love hath any man than to lay down his life for another. Think about what must have went through those soldiers' minds in those last few seconds of their life, so long as they realized they were about to leave this world. A lot of them didn't even want to be where they were at, but they went because they were proud of the country, and they went and served with honor and distinction. There were a lot that were brought in during the Vietnam era, and even in World War II and all. I guarantee you that they knew what was coming. They didn't want to go. Really, who would have wanted to walk into that? But they did it. And sadly, many came back to be treated horrifically. But there is a parallel in the Bible that I had never called for. And as I was looking at our amendments and our Bill of Rights, I noticed that the First Amendment really is the linchpin by which all other things stand on. If you take out the First Amendment, every one of the rest of them fall. And I'm going to read it to you. The First Amendment provides that Congress make, listen to this, no law respecting an establishment of religion or, they seem to miss this part, or prohibiting its free exercise. That's in the Constitution. And what did they do? They threatened and even jailed some pastors recently in direct violation of their, our own Constitution. It protects the freedom of speech, the press, assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Folks, all of our rights are under assault. We know that. They want to take away our freedom of speech. There are certain factions. And they say, well, the church shouldn't talk about none of this. I wish the church would have talked about it 60, 70 years ago when all this started to roll around. Because whether people want to admit it or not, the church, since our founding, has been the conscience of the nation. And when the church decided to become lukewarm, guess what? We started compromising with the devil. I used this analogy one time. You know how it works when you compromise with the devil? This bear, this hunter was out in the woods one time. He saw this bear one time. He came up to the bear. That old bear, he said, all right. The bear holds up his paw and says, don't shoot, don't shoot. He says, let's talk about this thing. And so the hunter kind of scratched his head, talking to her. Okay, let's sit down and talk about it. Bear says, well, why do you want to shoot me? He said, well, I want a nice warm fur coat for winter. It's coming. <laughs> Bear says, yeah, well, I'm hungry and I want a stomach full. And before anything else could be said, he leaned over and gobbled the man up. Now think about it. They both got what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> 
but did it work out really good for anybody? That's what compromising with the devil is like. Anytime you compromise with the devil, you better believe there is a receipt attached to it. He'll make you pay more than you ever intended to pay. You know that. He'll make you stay longer than you ever planned to stay. But with the First Amendment, all of our other rights are based upon that First Amendment. And ironically, as I was reading through God's top ten, Exodus 3.20, the very first commandment, y'all know what it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And have you ever noticed that God's there is used with a little g, not a big g? We have, there are other gods. By the way, God doesn't mean that they're omnipotent like our God. It just means that they have control over a person because they're allowed to. And God is anything you put in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many of them have demonic attachments, if not all. Some have more serious repercussions than others. But thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, what did Jesus say? The greatest of these commandments, I can sum it all up in one thing. And it goes right back to the first commandment. What does it say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your heart. And love your neighbor as yourself. Talk about making it easy. Why do we make it so hard? <laughs> we live in a land that we're so blessed. So many gave so much so that we really have had it easy compared with most of the world. Yes. And yet we make it different. Why? Because we cannot follow our seven precepts that have been laid out for us. We need to return back to that place where our Constitution reigns supreme in this land. <coughs> where the people that are, and I get really frustrated with people saying they're our leaders. No, they're our servants. They're called civil servants. They're supposed to be answering to us. And somewhere along the line, we got the horse yeah. parked behind the cart. We need to understand that. The First Amendment commandment are the pillars of both. Both documents, once again, they are drenched with precious blood. The freedoms we enjoy are precious blood by men and women who have sacrificed it all. We know that here in this country, the First Amendment is under assault. Why is the First Amendment so much under assault? Like I said, once that one falls, everything else falls. You have another God, guess what? Then God is no longer God of your life. Same principle. It all falls to pieces. And guess what? Those other gods come under the head. You don't think there's a God? And I'm not talking that causes people to steal. Satan, satanic God. I'm not talking about a God as in we know it as God, but I'm talking about something that takes control of someone's life and becomes their most important thing. Or a kind of adultery that has decimated the family unit. These, these are very sobering times, folks. Churches and small shops were shut down during the pandemic, but yet the billionaires, there are 500 new billionaires created during the same period. We were used to be prided in having debate and discussion, and now if someone doesn't agree with you, they simply cancel you. That's not what our forefathers envisioned. They envisioned us even if we didn't agree on everything. We sat there and worked together for the common good. And now we see that no more. Why? Because God has been removed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one true God, Yeshua Jesus, has been removed. 
and in this place, and I would recommend a book if you've been on our Wednesday nights, we've talked about it some, but for those of you who haven't, there's a great writer by the name of Jonathan Kahn, very, very brilliant, and he wrote a book about Return of the Gods. I cannot recommend it enough. It will really expose what's going on in the spiritual warfare that is taking place before our eyes. But don't look so down, because I do believe we are right on the edge of something great. Yeah. Now, in the rapture, I pray with all my heart. <coughs> People ask me, and we talk about it many times. I pray for one more spiritual awakening in this, this country. Just one more time for people's eyes, for the shackles to fall off and then to see that the only hope for a better future for their children, their grandchildren, and themselves is to return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. 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 But if they don't, the church is going to be out of here, and when they're out, you might as well set your watch to around seven plus years and hope you make it through. But sadly, the things that were supposed to be set up that the people have died for, even today, they, they died so that we could have free press, and yet the press has been now used to censor, suppress stories, and become more of a propaganda agent for the globalist agenda. Do you understand this is a one world agenda that is happening right before our very eyes? Yeah. We think this is an American agenda. No, we're just a piece in the puzzle. And sadly, like I said, the church has by and large been the conscience of the nation. And sadly, it's too many times the salt has lost its savor. There are many people that put their name under church and Christian, but they're disregarding the first commandment. You can't disregard the first commandment and have either. You can have the rest of your doctrine spot on, but if you have another God before him, the rest doesn't really matter, does it? If Jesus is not leading the way, I don't care how great your doctrine is, you're going to bust that wide open. There you go. I'm not going to mince words about it. We had better buckle up. The baton has been passed. That baton is soaked in blood. Are we willing to stand like those who come before us stood if it comes right down to it? I'm not, by the way, advocating any violence. I'm saying it can come to us, okay? Churches are under attack. Understand this. Not, not just from verbal, but we've had church attacks. We've heard of the church shootings down in Texas a few years back. All the members killed, and we've seen it happen across the countries. What used to be the safest place in this country has now no more. So be sober minded. That's what this is. This is a sobering message. The Bible clearly says, Blessed is the nation whose Lord is God. Amen. And once again, that's a capital L and capital G. Amen. Get it right. We need to turn back to God, and I mean we need to do it for her. Because here's the truth, folks. We are not by and large anymore, and maybe, I don't know, it's been many decades, but we are by and large a godless, we're not a godless nation. The problem, ironically, is that we have too many gods. Yeah. You know, in decades past, you heard a lot about the atheist movement. And they seemed to, through the ACLU, there was a lot of thing, activity that went on that seemed to be in. We had to have a little bit of friction with the Christian, you know, where to place crosses and so forth and so on. But now, if you look at most of these young people, they are pursuing this spiritual New Age nonsense. What I used to call it nonsense is demonic. It controls their mind. It tells them if you'll notice, everything that is of the devil will center on you. Me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity, 
We should be about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and if we want to continue to say blessed, we must return from where we came. Amen. There is no turning back if we don't. That's not my opinion. That's God's opinion. Amen. This battle is truly a spiritual battle, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. I find it so interesting that during our last presidential cycle, and I'm not getting into the fray of things too much other than to say that one candidate, interestingly enough, and probably one of the few truthful things they said, but they said, this is a battle for the soul of America. Well, they were kind of right. <laughs> Sadly, though, the soul seems to be heading the wrong direction, doesn't it? Right. Amen. Amen. The love of many has waxed cold. Consciousness has been seared. We don't believe in absolute truths anymore. Instead, it's all about how it makes me feel. And we've been seeing the hand we're dealt always comes with a receipt that says soul to save. So what can we do to honor our fallen brothers and sisters who've fallen before us? What can we do? First of all, we need to pray, pray, pray for a national revival. And as far as it may be sometimes, we still need to pray for those in authority over us. Hear me clearly. We need to be good citizens. I don't care how the rest of the world acts. That doesn't give us permission to act like hooligans. We need to act respectfully. Let our light shine. That is honoring the legacy we've been left. And finally, we need to stand firm on the Constitution. And when, how can we honor God? Once again, let's just follow what Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. As you enjoy your day with your family, I, I trust and pray, or maybe in front of the TV, snoozing, which I know you don't. Uh, whatever you do, just take a moment and think of those families today that have that missing place at the table. A missing mom, a missing dad, a missing child, a missing spouse. And what they really were fighting for. And are we doing their memory of honor. We need to be. Because I believe it was Abraham Lincoln that said that freedom is only one generation away. I'm not trying to put that exactly right, but y'all know what I'm getting at. One generation away. And I think we're seeing what can happen when we take God out. Stand with me this morning. Our closing hymn is 596. I surrender all. If there's anything in your heart and mind, altars are always open. We're here to pray with you.